All right, so it's time to transition into our Aura Insight uh, segment. And today we're going to be talking about how to monetize your passion. Uh, so, Zahid, do you want to start yeah, us off? Yeah, so this is an interesting one because I think a few times we talked about pas- passion. I think even today's podcast, uh, pursue your passions, go after my, your passions. So that was, you know, uh, a few of the things, I've, a few times I mentioned that. Uh, so what I want to help uh, people uh, with today is how do you ma- monetize your passion? How do you take something that you love doing and make that into something where it's a business where you can do more of it and, and become maybe your only source of income or one of your sources of income, right? So uh, first of all, I want to just define passion because it's kind of a loose term. So the way I'm going to interpret passion for this discussion is something that you do on your time off, right? Like what do you do when you're, when you're off, you're off the clock, you don't have anything to do and you're like, okay, good. Now I have the time for X, right? What is that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Is it music? Is it, you know, watching documentaries? Is it to read? Is it whatever is something you like to do um, that is something you would do for free and you're doing it for fun, right? So that's what I would define as passion. For you to monetize it, right? Let's talk about how you can monetize the passion. And I have two rules I'll talk about. I'll have you guys comment before I continue. Uh, One is you have to believe that it could be a profession because if you don't take it seriously yourself, it's never going to materialize to anything more, right? So I think that's a very important thing is to believe that, hey, you know what, I can make something out of it, whether it be photography, you know, graphics design, painting, um, whatever, whatever your passion is, you have to believe that I am committed and determined to make this a profession of mine, a source of income. Because if you don't believe it, it's never going to happen, right? So that's the first rule. The second thing is, is um, because it's a passion, right? So that's the first one is a positive thing for you to kind of uh, carb in your mind. But the second thing is, is about, uh, realizing that because it's a passion, it's probably something that a lot of other people like to do too, right? So if it's graphics design, music, this, that, you're going to have a lot of competition, right? So you're going to have to keep both, take it seriously. It could be a profession, but at the same time, what you're, you're, you're pursuing could be something that thousands and millions of people are pursuing, right? So, uh, that's an important point. Did you guys want to say something before I go? Yeah, I think, on this topic, something to do, which is fun and after work, and everything, for me, it's food. Okay. Eating Think, or cooking? <laughs> cooking, <laughs> eating, thinking about food. What, it, 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 it's just everything around food. I love that. Different yeah. cuisine, restaurant, what am I going to eat? What, what's new in town? Mm. Where, do, where, where do we go? Food monetizing it mm-hmm. i think that's a great uh baseline uh, example for us to kind of use as an example for this uh subject yeah so let's talk about a few ways because you made what you mentioned is something very common where i love doing it but i, I don't see any vision or a path for how do you it interpret to, to that? Make, yeah. yeah so how do you monetize it i think the first rule of monetizing it is you got to treat it like a job now, what I mean by that is to not treat it like a job where uh, I hate my job and I don't want to go, <laughs> but more that how many hours do you work in your job? 40 right. hours mm. every single week for y- years, right? So think about how many years, how many thousands of hours. Every uh, every year you're putting 2,000, literally 2,080, but let's call it 2,000 yeah. hours of work in your job, right? In five years, 10,000 hours in in. And in, in, you know, ten years is twenty thousand hours, right? So, have you gotten better in your job since you started? I certainly yeah, have. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right. So, when you're putting in that time and effort, you've gotten better, mm-hmm. right? So, if you treat it like a job where, you know, you you put time in, you put two thousand hours a year, and over a period of time, you get better and better. Um, you've read books. Right, you've gotten training. Right, you learn new skills. You learn Photoshop. You learned uh, software. You went to YouTube and, and learned it. So, if mm-hmm. you put, if you think about the time and effort you put into your job, right, that the time uh, learning these things, you've networked with people. Oh, you're in the same industry. Awesome. Let's right. get together. Let's yeah. talk A, B, and C. You gain experience. So, you're you've seen results with your job, right? So when when you know, someone loves music. They like the jam. They love their guitar. And they're like learning, and they're spending hours learning the mm-hmm. tune and play in front of their friends and family. Or you like to, cook. I mean, I've gone to your house and you've cooked some pretty yeah. good stuff, right? So that's your passion. You love it. 
but you can't figure out ways to monetize it. Well, first rule is if you treat it like, you know, how you took, how, how seriously you took your job, that would start opening the doors up for monetizing, right? Second is don't do it for the money because if you do it strict, if that's one of your first rules, money won't come, mm -hmm. right? You have to do it for the passion because you love it and you want to be good at it or be the best at it or, you know, show your skills to others, right? Then money will come. If you look for money first, it There's, usually doesn't come, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about one thing that a lot of people, you know, that keep people on the sidelines and not in the game is basically risk. Yes, there is risk. So, for example, you know, how can you, how can you monetize you know, what Sabir is into, like, you know, food, right? And he said he's into, like, several types of food. He's into cooking food. He's into um, eating it, right? And he's also, <laughs> I'm, 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 the, I'm with you with the eating part. <laughs> and he's also into, um, you know, restaurants, and, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's, I, I, right there, I can think of three, three ways. ways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 All you can eat food competition. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can that's the eating part. Yeah, that's the <laughs> eating you could uh, well you don't have to like go to the competition but like like there's all these youtube videos where all they're doing is eating and they're describing yes, how the food tastes exactly. the vlog the food blog yeah. food yeah. blogs yeah. exactly or what i think it's called there's there's videos of people just eating they're That's not right. even speaking oh, yeah. Mong bok, i think it's called or whatever <laughs> like listen yeah, to yeah them listen chewing. to yeah. them chew so there's there are people out there who just yeah. they like what they Super like niche. Yeah. Yeah. i think another twist to it if i may which is we're thinking about monetizing it yeah. is competition of turnoffs for people in general sometimes okay sure like there are 50 other vlogs going on this sure. is going on what are my chances it's sure. it's i feel this is the problem that's well, general this, this, so this we'll, i'll stop you right there a million people yeah mm -hmm. it does and that's the, the i think a couple of the things are the most common uh things that keep you on the sidelines one is you know, there's a million people that love it too. Well, how am I going to stick out? Yeah. There is that, well, I'm going to put money into it. I don't know. I'm going to put my hard-earned money into it. And there is that whole element of like, um, how do I make this into a business? So I think when you're looking at, if you're looking at it from that point of view, it's not going to work out, right? Mm. Right. For, like, keep that aside. Like, yes, it's in the back of your head. You're not, you're not going to just do something and you're going to be the first one in the world mm -hmm. doing a podcast, doing a food blog, doing a restaurant review, making a website on it. Like, yeah. You're not going to be, Right. But you don't have to be the first to be the, the successful. How many thousands of podcasts are there? How many thousands of websites that sell airline tickets are, are, are there? Yep. But like every time I book a ticket, it seems like it's a different website, right? Uh, you know, trip.com and expedia.com and, you know, Mamondo and the airline. Like there's mm -hmm. a thousand of them. And then there's a thousand airlines, right? But they all some, seem Not to have making money, right? So what's that? <laughs> Not <Fortunately>. in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, now there's, there's some options, right? Finally. Um, but if, if you can overcome that, you know, that That's, obstacle yeah. of like, you can still be successful if mm -hmm. you're not number one. Do you know who the, the first um, photo sharing uh, social media company in the world was? No. It's not Facebook, right? Like you, the first thing you think is Facebook, right? It was the 12th, right? Um, and again, I'm not saying that everything you do has to be the biggest and the best in the world. There are certain industries and certain things that there's a lot of players and they all seem to be making money or... Uh, or, or monetizing it. I think right? sometimes you don't even know what uniqueness you could bring to the table. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's, 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 that's where, the key. You yeah. forget that's, that's who the, you are yeah. when yeah. you're getting distracted by potential because, competition right. yeah. and yeah. Potential making risks. money and making yeah. it a and making job. Money. Right? Yeah. I think if you, I think if you do something for the sake of your love of doing it, the the pure passion and joy, mm -hmm. and you decide to somehow put it out there, whether it's doing a podcast or just recording yourself and putting it on youtube and you just consistently keep doing it keep doing it um eventually people will pick up on that passion and and, and um want to engage with what you're doing because they sense your passion yeah. they your sense it they always sense it you yeah. go on an interview I, I, I think sometimes we are trying to map everything out yeah, yeah. Well, have everything figured out. Well, that's, well, we'll talk about that Analysis in two seconds. Paralysis. Yes, we we'll talk about it on almost every podcast. So I love where this is going, and you're hundred percent right. If you do it for the wrong reasons, and you know, you think of all the reasons why it's not going to be successful, it's not going to happen. People can sense your passion. They can sense mm -hmm. in the videos, like the the, the the podcasters we watch, the ones that like they you love. Yeah. Well, well, I think 
they love what they're doing and you can feel it. Like the, mm-hmm. the, the person on the screen is like a, like, you know, low energy. You're not going to like, it's not going to resonate, but if they have the high energy, they're passionate, mm-hmm. they're smiling. And so right there, they, the first subconscious checkbox is checked. Boom. Next. Okay. Then you start looking at the content and if you, if, if, if it connects with you or not, but again, people can sense your passion. You go and interview, people can sense it. I think when you're passionate, more good things happen. Right. So I think that's a very, very important right. point when you do have passion not for it. It allows you to be more authentic as well, which is what everyone says that you have to bring to the table when you're yes. when you're like the face of a company. You have to be authentic. Yes. So if you're doing something that you're already excited about doing, that just comes naturally. It's not something you have to practice. Right. So it does come out in, I mean, this is, this is like in videos when you're posting online and like if that's the direction of the, the passion that you're trying to monetize, if you have to create videos and, and build an audience. You said you kind of just keep it open minded and see how it goes, just like your career. Like how many people thought they would do the job that they're doing right now? Never, in never, years. right? Yeah. They came in. <laughs> never. They, yeah, they, they in had. Case, yeah, they yeah. come in with certain like you know I'm going to do this or that, and within one or two or three years, their career kind of goes. It changes, right? And sometimes like, after five more years, it goes another way, right? So they just knew that they wanted to you know have a, they have to get a job they have to you know pay for expenses and they kind of go into it and then they find things that you interest them niche. and then they find your niche yeah. same thing here right i think if you look at it from that point of view like i really mean if you treat it like or look at your job as like a, like a parallel it does wonders because you know maybe you go into it because you're going to make a food blog uh, but it ends up morphing into something different or, you know what, you start getting more likes or people comment on a certain thing about your blog and then you realize that maybe I should be only focusing on that, right? right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe you do a general blog, but you know what, every time you do a, a Chinese food blog, it's like get the most comments or whatever. Yeah. And then maybe you just focus on Chinese, whatever it is, right? Just keep an open mind, just like you did with your career. I think you, you get to more success. I think the key thing is get it started. Get yes. on That's it. That's the truth. <laughs> right? And I think yeah. take the first step. That's really the last point. We did talk about show your passion, all right? Um, makes you authentic. Uh, but let's, t- let's end with a search. Don't search for, uh, for perfection. Cause it's something that we all struggle with. It's not ready. It's not ready. Even today, I had the conversation. Why not wait another? If you do that, it never happens, right? Mm-hmm. You're, and you, you said it several, several times. You have to iterate anyways. Even if you thought it was perfect and somehow you got it released, right? You have to iterate anyway. Someone will find a flaw after it's released. Yeah. And you probably yeah. will yourself. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you keep changing it. So I think if you seek perfection, wait for the right time, it's, I don't know, like it's never going to happen. So you're going to have to just jump in, right? And you mitigate the risk by knowing that, okay, I'm okay. Maybe I can spend $10,000 or $5,000 or no dollars, but 50 hours or 100 hours, right. whatever it is. You figure out what your kind of your risk tolerance is. And then you go, that's your budget, right? Whether it be time budget or, or dollar budget. And then mm-hmm. explore, you know, wander, figure out where things are going. And then from there, you can say, okay, this is something I want to continue pursuing. I, I see some potential there. Or you know what? Yeah, it's not what I thought it was. But it's not going to happen unless you start. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you're only going to learn right. once you start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. So that you are in the know when Aura drops new content. And obviously comment below. We love to hear your feedback. Stay tuned. And let us know what you think.